Detroit Lions cornerback Cameron Sutton has just been cut by the Detroit Lions after only one year of his three-year contract. And after reports and details have come out about his recent warrant for his arrest, today let's discuss the details of Cameron Sutton and why he got cut by the Detroit Lions. What is going on you guys? My name is Metro. I typically don't make this type of content. However, I wanted to start delving my hands into some NFL news content. Today we are going to be discussing Cameron Sutton and all the details surrounding his warrant for his arrest. This is a case that is going to be covering a lot of different sour subjects so if you guys are uncomfortable with things such as domestic violence strangulation or anything to do with that you guys are free to click off the video and i appreciate you guys for clicking in the first place with that being said we are going to be covering a couple different things including the actual details of the story and some potential rumors that have been swirling around regarding the situation but in order to start this video off we got to understand who cameron sutton is so let's briefly discover who he is and how we got to the situation cameron sutton was drafted in 2017 by the pittsburgh steelers in the third round he would serve with the pittsburgh steelers between 2017 to 2012 in last year's free agency he would sign with the detroit lions on a three-year deal worth over 30 million dollars total last year for the detroit lions he played a pivotal role in their nfc championship run playing 17 games having six 65 total tackles, one forced fumble, and one interception. He was now entering year two of his contract before being abruptly cut by the Detroit Lions. This raised many questions as to why it happened, and well, the answers came very quickly. Reports would come out very quickly after this that Cameron Sun had a warrant for his arrest in Hillsborough County, Florida. This was in relation to a March 7th domestic violence incident. Now, I am getting all the details of this information from the Detroit News, so I want to give credit to them for breaking this and also allowing us to read into this as much as we can. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office would release a tweet on March 20th, 2024. The tweet would say, The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office needs your assistance in locating a wanted subject. Cameron Sutton, 29. He is wanted for aggravated battery, domestic violence. He may be driving a Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Now, they would go on to actually correct something in the comment section of that post, saying Cameron Sutton is wanted for domestic battery by strangulation, not aggravated battery domestic violence. And essentially what happened is this. On March 6th, or some day around that time, Cameron Sutton and and a woman in Florida who he had a baby with were scheduled to have a Zoom hearing on the paternity of their child. This was an ongoing thing that happened way back even when he was on the Pittsburgh Steelers where they were trying to figure out custody and parenting time for the child. This is backed up by when Sutton filed a petition against a 35-year-old woman in August 2022 that among other goals sought to determine paternity and establish parenting time. We can assume that based off the fact that they are still having ongoing conversations regarding the paternity that there was some obvious disagreements between who gets full-time custody, who gets more time, and just kind of all the ins and outs of wanting to seek parenting time with the child. However, before the Zoom meeting ever happened, or potentially after the Zoom meeting ever happened, there was some domestic battery by strangulation on the part of Cameron Sutton. The woman would file a report to the police after having a tons of bruises across her neck, her head, her shoulders, her back, basically everywhere on the upper part of her body. There were even some rumors that potentially Cameron Sutton, and I'm going to try to say this as safe for work as I possibly can, threw her off a three-story building. Again, rumors there's nothing to prove that that actually happened quite yet but i quite generally don't believe that happened just because if you fell from a three-story building i'd imagine you'd have more than just a couple bruises but again i don't have anything to prove that i just want to relay the information to you guys and ever since the warrant for his arrest has come out cameron sutton has gone missing which is shocking given where we are at in today's society where basically everywhere you go is being tracked in some sort of way whether it's through your phone service provider or your credit cards or your debit card card balance, your bank accounts, whether it's through surveillance cameras, facial ID in security camera. Yet despite that, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office has not been able to contact him. They have not seen him. They've even tried to contact his representatives. They have nothing to give to them. Cameron Sutton has essentially gone off the grid. This has also brought up a ton of different rumors regarding where he is and whether or not he's even alive. So the first question I asked myself was, well, if he's not alive, who did it? And unfortunately, we don't have any clear answer as to who it was or what might have happened but we can probably assume one of three things again there's no actual reports or facts in the statement that he is actually dead but based on the fact that he's been missing for two weeks it is a little bit on the table here we can assume the three ways that this might have happened might have been through himself through the victim's family or friends or through some other form of means like drug use stuff like that i would probably say of the three that one's probably the least realistic but again i just want to throw that out on the table for you guys but based on the fact that he's been missing for two weeks 
it has to be brought up. It's a serious situation here. Again, I want to reiterate that I do not condone any of these actions, and I would hope that none of you guys condone any of these actions. More than likely, Cameron Sutton's NFL career is over with, and for the Detroit Lions, they now have a hole at the cornerback position. They will likely probably take a cornerback in round one or round two of the draft, but ultimately, that's not the main part of the story I wanted to get out of this. I wanted to give you guys as much information about the situation as possible. And as we sit here today, as of when I'm making this video on March 23rd, Saturday, no new news has come out out regarding his whereabouts and whether or not he is actually going to turn himself in. And here's my opinion of it. If you're a true man and if you're somebody who truthfully did what he did, the best course of action would be for him to actually turn himself in. Because as we know, you're innocent till you're proven guilty. Again, I do think he's guilty in this situation. There's a lot of factors that are going into why we should all think he is guilty. But as we know, sometimes players do get wrongly convicted and it's happened multiple times and I'm willing to hear him out at the bare minimum. With that being said, he should still turn himself in regardless of whether or not he is innocent or not. Again, I think we should all lean towards the fact that he's more than likely not innocent. At the bare minimum, he should stop his hiding and turn himself in. He's actually doing more harm to his case doing what he's potentially doing. If he had just turned himself in, and even if he was proven guilty, he would have probably served some time in jail, eventually probably would have gotten out on bail, and could have turned his life around to do better for the future of his life. But because he's gone missing and hasn't turned himself in, he's more than likely probably picking up even more sentencing in the court's eyes. Again, we're talking about a guy who just signed a three-year, $33 million contract with the Detroit Lions after he's already been a proven veteran in the NFL. For all this sort of stuff to come out now, is crazy to me and I truly cannot believe that we still live in a world where you have professional athletes doing this stuff. And this does raise even more questions about why he actually did this. It's, does this have something to do with, as we all know, concussions, CTE, brain drama, all that sort of stuff. It's something that we have to mention in this video because it would be wrong for me not to mention those extracurricular stuff that does happen to many athletes around the world that does cause them to go crazy and do things they shouldn't do. Hell, look at guys like Antonio Brown who hasn't been completely confirmed to have CTE, but it's very obvious he probably does. Or we can even look at Aaron Hernandez, who obviously, as we all know his story, had CTE and would go on to do what he did. Now, fortunately for us, Sutton didn't actually do that to her. It still is unfortunate the circumstances of what he actually did in this situation. I fully condone everything he did, and I fully hope that the victim is okay and is not suffering mentally or emotionally in this situation. I hope that she is okay. And for the sake of Cameron Sutton, I know this is going to come off a little bit weird, but hopefully he's not actually dead. In a situation like this, it's always kind of difficult to say that you hope he isn't, especially knowing what he did and what happened. But for his sake, I hope he actually does turn himself in and I hope that he is safe himself so that he could turn himself in and hopefully change his life around after some prison time or whatever may happen coming from this. Because at the end of the day, the last thing that we want in this situation is even more piles of mess on already what has happened. Again, my full condolences to the family family of the victim and I hope that they are doing okay or I hope in this situation that everything does figure its way out and that everything legally gets handled in a proper way but you guys tell me what you guys thoughts on this whole situation is again let's try not to be speculative and let's try not to just come out and abruptly say oh yes he is dead or oh yes he did this or she did that or this is a lie or this is the truth let's just hold off take everything step by step let's wait till more details come out I just wanted to relay this information and at some point, we'll probably do a follow-up once we get more information. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Again, I'm going to be doing more NFL news more recently, as well as still my typical content. But I love you guys. Peace.